Well, Mr. Whitmore, I went to film school, and before I went, my parents were really worried whether I was making the right decision. Now, I know that your parents were a little concerned about you going into acting. Did your mom at one time send you to a neighbor to talk to a neighbor about your career? Well, plans? That, that was when I was uh, in my teens. And I guess I was a little repstreperous. I don't know. I must have been a little crazy. But anyway, there was a guy next door who was our neighbor uh, named Hartwell, and he was a psychiatrist. And uh, she said, why don't you go talk to Dr. Hartwell? And I said, all right, fine. He's a nice guy. I like him. Big, fat guy. Nice fellow. And so we sat down. We talked for a while. And then when we finished, my mother said, what do you recommend, Dr. Hartwell? What do you think this young man's uh, you know, future holds? And he said, I think he ought to be an actor. Now that could not, if he had said that I should be the three-headed bearded lady, that would have had the same effect on my mother. She said, I, be, I do not understand that at all, and you're dead wrong, you know, Mr. Hart, Dr. Harwell. Because acting was not even in it for my family. It was never mentioned. I mean, we didn't we know how to spell it, you know. Now, you went off to Yale, and yeah. you played football. One of your coaches went on to a rather... Jerry uh, Ford. Yeah. yeah, Jerry Ford. Well, Jerry was responsible for my going to Yale. In, in the first place, I was all set to go to Michigan. I had a full scholarship to Michigan before my knees went this way. And I had my trunk, and I had steamer trunks in those days, and I had it all packed, ready to go with the stickers on it and everything. And Jerry wrote me a three-page letter from Yale. He was then coaching at Yale and said, come here, kid, and I'll see to it that you get a full scholarship, and blah, 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 blah. And they were still giving them in those days, and I happened to get there just at the time when they were going Simon Pure. My knees went, they took the scholarships away. I slept on Jerry Ford's couch when I first got to New Haven. I had no money, and I slept the first week while I got a room at Yale. And uh, that's the story of, of Jerry Ford. You know, uh, I always, there must be certain films that are harder to make than others. When you did Planet of the Apes... You know, with terrible. Uh, how bizarre a film was that to work on? Terrible. The, the makeup alone took three hours. You know, and I was the only one in the show that didn't wear makeup. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. But uh, uh, little Kim Hunter, you know, and, and Roddy McDowell, they had to sit there. And I remember Kim sitting in the makeup chair and tears just coming down her cheek. They had to sit for, they were longer than three hours. They had to put on all of this stuff on their mind, you know. It was a tough one to make. Now, with this film, I mean, I, you look at your, your resume and all the incredible things you've worked on. How does the crew on this film, how do they react to you? Do they, do they still feel easy enough to joke with you? Or are they in awe well, of you? Well, I think you have to set the tone, you know. If you come on kind of, uh, you know, a, a tight <laughs> rear end, then they're apt to, you know, respond that way. But uh, that's, that's not the way that people should deal with each other, in my view. Unless, of course, there are some actors that have to do that to find their own way to work, you know, have to be kind of isolated, but I'm not one of those.